the studio of your mom's basement comes a podcast by two idiots and a revolving door of legends and has from the oldest university in Texas. This is Purple, Gold, and Getting oh, Old. We're doing the podcast without doing the podcast. Yeah. Okay. Sorry, folks. We were, we were, uh, we were having a secret discussion without y'all. All right. Andy Archibald. I don't even know how many times you've been on this podcast now. It's like your fourth or fifth. Uh, something Where like that. Yeah. yeah. Oh, well, let's say that. Well... Let's let's jump right into it today. Uh, That's what I love about this episode. We've covered your background. <laughs> well, I, know. I know. I was about to say, like, well, tell us how you got to UHB, but we've told that. <laughs> I think that's been done. Yeah, Folks, we will. We'll put a link in the YouTube description to Andy's prior episode, so you can do your you your stalking. I have a question so for y'all, though. Oh, oh, hold on, hold on. But I have a question for y'all. Oh, okay. oh, okay. What did the Baptists do this time? Why are all the non-Baptist schools leaving our conference? <laughs> what what do we do? I, I definitely have some thoughts on it. It's, hey, it's us, a special uh, matter. Us uh, Methodists like to disaffiliate from a lot of things. Uh, I would say uh, look at some of the last conventions <laughs> and look at uh, maybe like uh, research why Russell Moore and Beth Moore left the Baptist church. And I think that'll probably be your answer. Fair enough. <laughs> Oh, if you really want a rabbit hole, just go Global Methodist <laughs> versus United Methodist. Well, that's, just, that's well. a can of worms. And Actually, the I would are doing the Methodist move now. The Africans just pulled out of the, yeah. the uh, Anglican Church. The oh, one dang. thing I would t- I actually tell people not to research that on the internet because what they see is a bunch of articles on how it's like the the global Methodists hate the gays, and I'm like, <laughs> no, that actually had literally nothing to do with why we left. <laughs> so, if you want the real story, ask a global Methodist. That's there you my, go. It's my spiel on that. Uh, yeah. McMurray's leaving. Aren't wow. they? Who is even did left? Not expect this to start off as like denominational actor. Oh, I thought okay. we were talking so, yeah. sports. No, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so Southwestern is gone. They're already yeah. gone. Yeah. And then the other five or however many are left, all the non-Baptist schools. So only it's going to be us, Hardin Simmons, Howard Payne, and East Texas. They're all gone. Everybody wow. else is gone. TLU left too, right? They, they will, yeah. Or, yeah. Wow. So, yeah. It's I don't called know. the rapture. <laughs> <laughs> but all the Baptists are left. You know, I'm actually, I'm very upset with ETB right now. And it's not even because of my UMHB side. It's my Aggie side that's mad at them. And I never thought that's something I'd be mm. saying someday. But anyway, so <laughs> fast forwarding past your previous episodes, because uh, we, we've talked about how we've met. We've talked about uh, how all that came together. Um one, but one thing I do want to ask is we've asked all the other guys, like when our group started to get together, I told all of them, Nathan and I are the only ones that kind of hung out already, but I, w- I would make an exception. You had started hanging out with us. So like before I was Tyler, there from the beginning. Yeah. yeah, before Tyler started coming around, before Kane started coming around, like you were, you were a frequent visitor to our apartment and you were already scheduled to move in. So you knew that you were going to be around us all the time, but did you have any idea that that group was going to form like it did oh no so no I, way i don't think any of us did <laughs> i mean i figured that we'd be around and you know it'd be like hanging out here and there but i mean i never expected it to be like this yeah for sure um tyler i blanked on what we normally start off with so. well you know we've, we've covered everything but what i was gonna go to from the start is we talked a lot about your time at UNHB, but i want to go to another era Okay. I want to go to the Turtle Creek post college working at Scott and White. Oh, uh, okay. So, s- just starting off like right here, what was it like to have just graduated college, but you were still living in the same town and you're dating a student and you've got friends who are students? What was, what was that like, like to have like one foot in both worlds, I guess? So, it was interesting. I definitely will say that. I early on that first year, whenever like school got started back up that year after I was gone, I came onto campus a couple of times and I was like, this is just not, I, I shouldn't be doing this. This doesn't seem right. I it's not because feeling. I shouldn't be there, but it was just like, this is just, yeah. uh, this is their place. They can come to me if they want to. And so I was like, I'm just not staying on campus anymore. I went to things like, you know, games and stuff like that. That was one thing, but I was not into like events that were on campus anymore. That was not happening. Yeah. So yeah. When you went to games, was it nice to kind of be out of the couch crew or would it, was it odd? Like what was, what was your experience? 
by then everybody was out of the couch crew. <laughs> Well, actually, <laughs> there, 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 there wasn't much of an actual couch crew section to be had, so yeah. everybody was just kind of sitting in the normal stands, and I was just kind of around. Um, yeah. I don't really remember how well uh, fans were at that time. I remember the Delaware game, or not the Delaware game, but the Wesley game that was at home that year. Well, because wow, everybody was having fun, but other than that, I, there wasn't really much to going on yet. And this, of course, the new stadium wasn't there yet, so that was the little Daryl game, right? Yes. Yeah. Uh, okay. I was, was at that one that... too. Yeah. <laughs> gotcha. Yeah. That I watched that too. Actually, my wife believe really I've been at that game. That might have been like her first game ever. I just know I watched that game from the regular stance with Jake McGinnis. Uh, I'm sure we were all yeah. around together. I, mean, if, Honestly, if I... I was. I was on the far end. On the I was for some reason I was on the other end, and I cannot for the life of me remember who was sitting next to me. But I feel like there... that's where we all were. I think y'all were down on the other for some reason. I think y'all yeah, already no, had y'all were sitting right. with somebody. So yeah, I was I, I, I want to say Sean Wolf, but I could be wrong. Hmm. Um, I just remember Ladero was running right at me, like <laughs> towards my direction. And when he started to go down, I'm, I saw his arm, and I'm like, "Don't, don't, don't be a hero. Don't try it." No. And then it goes up, and I'm like, "Oh, you idiot!" And then he oh, I, I was like, "You genius!" <laughs> I'm pretty sure I yelled, "What are you doing?" And then just screamed my head off when he caught it. <laughs> That was just like I'm watching it in real time. Like, is this about to happen? <laughs> <laughs> and then what? It took us three or four days to get it on Sports Center. <laughs> yeah, oh, man. yeah. I think uh, that was around the same time that Kane and Emily got engaged because I was in Houston at their engagement thing, and I think we were on, like on two different top tens, if I remember. We were on at least one for some reason, <laughs> and we're at Cottonwood. That week. Yeah, we were yeah. celebrating their. Uh, engagement and we look up at the sports bar and Kane and I are like oh my gosh we're on TV <laughs> yeah the next week was like a defensive like tackle or something I can't remember exactly what happened but it was like the game against Mount Union we had like blew the guy up yeah that's what it was maybe that's yeah. the play but yeah that mm -hmm. was <laughs> there was just something about ESPN that year we were like let's yeah randomly well, end up what there. were some of your your favorite memories from you know this era still uh just hanging around Turtle Creek oh I mean the pool, yeah, like yeah. everybody was just always over there. <laughs> yeah. uh, whether it was people supposed to be or shouldn't be, we were always there having fun. Yeah. Uh, and then let's not forget the uh, television falling off the second floor. <laughs> I was hoping it would go there. <laughs> yeah, that that was the greatest thing about that was like you weren't supposed to be there. You just no. happened <laughs> to be there uh, as, as me and Garrett dropped like a giant TV with like thick double glass off of the balcony. I, it's Folks, like it what? was it's... the heaviest TV I think was ever manufactured in the world. I, Hannah and I got it for free and we quickly found out why it was free. It didn't even work, but it was the glass was like this thick. The whole TV took two people at least to get it. And when Tyler and I tried to move it out, it was just like, we, we you know, neither of us were in as good a shape as we'd been in college at that point. But we were not in bad shape, and we looked at each other like, dude, this is going to be a very long trip to the dumpster. And I look over the balcony, I'm like, no, it's not. <laughs> hey, think of yourself. I was running five miles a week, three or five miles a week, three times a week. Really? Uh, at that, yeah, when oh. the first year I lived with you, I was, okay. I was like, I was probably, I, like, I wasn't as good as shit. Like, dude, I was still running a lot. Well, yeah, that's yeah. Like, like we weren't in bad it, shape. We just weren't I, like. I started getting out of shape as soon as I started dating Emily because it was like, <laughs> got, got it. and that was the first semester dating Emily. So that was there like more the start of it. <laughs> well, I just remember it was probably what 11, 12 o'clock about that time, and I'm getting home and I'm driving by, and I just see something fall. I didn't know what it was, and I just heard a crash. Had no idea it was you guys, but I'm like, I pulled up. Parked, I was like, "What just happened?" I walk over, I just see y'all going. Mm -hmm, I didn't do nothing, <laughs> and I was like, "What did y'all just do?" And no. I just, I just see this TV in pieces, just in a pile. So yeah. there's a uh, there's a video, and I've and Hannah still got it <laughs> on her phone. Of so she and Jill were across the street, and I called them. I said, "Make sure our neighbor is not walking out because if we had this old lady lived under us, and I was like, if this TV hits, she's gone, and I'm going to jail mm -hmm. for murder." <laughs> but so in hindsight, those are really stupid investment of ideas, but like, let's just throw it because it'll be easier to carry it in pieces, which to our credit, it was, but it was the, probably the most Motley Crue moment we've had. <laughs> we, we hear this voice from downstairs go, is everybody okay? 
<laughs> and I, I look, and I was like, yeah, man, we're good. And I was like, oh, it's Andy. <laughs> Dude, I was just so mad when you brought that TV back to the apartment. I was like, dude, there's no, you're like, it's free. I'm like, it's not going to work, man. And you're like, no. there's a reason it's free. Yeah. yeah. And, which I knew in advance, but I also wasn't going to pass up a free TV yeah. in case because it turned on and then it would just phase out after about three seconds. I'm like, well, mm. it'll be a nice table. <laughs> we had a, yeah. Andy, were you around when we blew up that TV at the cathedral? Uh, no, I don't think so. no, it was uh, so before you had moved that year before you moved in, um, one mm -hmm. of the guys that lived there had put this, it was about the same size as that TV, but it was nowhere near as heavy. Uh, replaced the screen and spray painted like vote for Garrett because it was when that SBA <laughs> thing was going on and put a light bulb on the inside and drove around campus and it was like glowing like this. And so it was like a light up sign. And mm -hmm. I had a really stressful week and Jerome and Nathan, uh, the, the, all three of those guys sat me down and said, look, either you can willingly take a break from campus and campaigning, or we're going to kidnap you and make you it's like, oh. well, I don't, don't have much of a choice. Do I? So, um, I, we all go out to a deer lease and <laughs> gather an arsenal of weaponry. And I mean, we just blew up that TV. There wasn't anything left of it. Yeah. I definitely wasn't there for that. <laughs> I gotta plug my charger in. I'll be back. Okay. So uh, I have on the uh, on this TV right here uh, the women's game, the UMHB women's game. Oh, yeah, and... is it tournament? Yeah, it's the first round of the tournament or the semifinal, whatever. It is. I don't know if it's semifinal oh, or quarterfinal, whatever. But wow. started. Uh, we're there's five minutes left and we're only up by one. So it's like, uh oh. Yeah, I'm. Uh, I'm not <laughs> being a good crusader right now. I'm watching the Tennessee game. <laughs> That's I knew okay. exactly what Tyler That's was looking okay. at. So I'm looking down at my phone, like, yeah. yeah. About this that. whole episode, I'm like, just like looking over here, like, uh huh. <laughs> I was, I was at here. my, uh, I was at my parents' house because I don't, I don't even get local channels. Like in Temple, even if you have an antenna, you cannot pick up basically anything you're not paying for. Wow. And yeah, but I also don't pay for hardly any services. So I'm over at my parents' house, and at halftime when it was tied, I looked at my parents. I'm like. Tyler and I are going to be in pure ADD <laughs> mode by the time we start recording tonight. <laughs> How's that game going? It's three point game with 46 seconds. Yeah. It's a nail biter. <laughs> 46 seconds left. Yeah. Yep. Oh, good Lord. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I imagine Tyler will see the ending before my phone updates. So I pretty much just have to watch Tyler instead of watching. <laughs> oh, there we go. Yeah. Well, oh man. Well, I'll try to, I'll try to not overreact. <laughs> oh, uh, Tennessee's going to win and Tyler's going to take it just to get my hopes up. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Okay. Uh, uh, all right. Going back to 2013. Uh, wait, have we told Atlanta stories? No. I don't know. Probably not. You have told okay. us that there's a story that you can't tell about Atlanta involving Nate, but I, I don't think we've uh, ever told any Atlanta stories. Uh, me too. But Andy wasn't in that. that he, Andy wasn't in the part that you can't tell. Right. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was on the plane. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah. No, uh, bus ride is fine. It's more the after. Uh, we like we went out with to the baseball game with y'all, and then did you go to Hooters with us too? <laughs> I don't think so. I don't think so. Yeah, that's when me and me and Nate were going downtown. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, no, we, we were not involved in that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Uh, so 2013, uh, you're, you're, you're living in uh, Turtle Creek. Uh, we have this great, it's like, I think it's the first year without our couch crew on a campus. So it doesn't even matter to you, maybe. Um, <laughs> I'm on campus, but I'm living off campus and all of my friends are graduated and I'm not involved in anything at all. Uh, <laughs> Laura tried to get me to go to this like big thing at the beginning of the year. I'm like, no, I don't think you understand. I'm not interested in making any more new friends. I'm just here to get my degree, get out of here and hang out with my alumni buddies. <laughs> uh, but so we had this great fall semester with the Ladaryl going to the semifinals. We're on sports center two weeks in a row. It's really, it's like, it's a cool time to be around UMHB. And then in the spring, um, I have to suddenly leave Turtle Creek at the last yeah. second. Uh, and get and so I ended up being on an air mattress at Andrew Steuben's house. Shout out all those guys. Um, but then a basketball team goes to the national championship. I right. have to take the bus, but luckily it's free because I am still a student. Uh, but you, 
uh, you flew. Uh, so tell us about how what, what was that like? Just uh, your your experience of Atlantic going to the national championship. While for people that they should know, like it's at the same place as the actual Final Four, so that like Michigan and Louisville and other right. Teams. It was the what the seventy fifth anniversary tour or, or tournament for the, the, the Division One, so they had all the other divisions playing in the same place. Obviously, we were in the where the Hawks play, not in the big dome where the Falcons play like the division one game, but still it was right there. Uh, title town and whatever they call it was just down the road. So all that, that was kind of cool to see. Uh, but yeah, we were in Atlanta. We stayed like it was, it was outside of Atlanta because Atlanta was totally taken over by the division one pair people. Cause there were four schools from those. And then, so there was the division two teams and us, and it was like, there was just a mistake. Everything was booked. We stayed at this dump. I don't even know. <laughs> I'm not going to say but it, no, it was, um, there was like piping issues. It was making noise all night long. We barely got any sleep. Just both went back to back home runs. In extra innings, I want to in say. In extra innings, yeah. Okay, I just cool. want to I just want to cut in real quick to know that I my internet cut out, so I switched to my hotspot which only happens on Zoom. And so the last thing I heard is we stayed in a dump thinking about basketball. And then when I cut back in, I hear extra innings. I'm like, how did we go from a <laughs> basketball game to the hotel to extra innings? I'm so lost right now. We went to the Braves game the night before the basketball oh, yeah. game. Yeah. yeah. And so that was a cool game to see. It was really fun. And I guess y'all had a night afterward. Uh, <laughs> we went back. Yeah, me and Nate, me and Nate we went and uh, experienced the city. Live your best life. In, in Franklin, actually, who was with cool. us, there were, there was a bunch of like uh, alumni parties for the Division One teams where they had rented out higher places for like Louisville parties and Michigan parties uh, downtown. And so we just like went in. I don't even know how we got in. We just went into those and just started hanging out, like talking to people. Uh, me and Nate got in this big argument over if you'd pronounce it Louisville or Louisville. <laughs> and so I'm like, all right, there's a Louisville place right there. We're gonna go in. It's, it's and, Lou, and we're gonna find somebody. And so I was like, Louisville or Louisville? And the guy's like, what the heck is Louisville? It's Louisville. I'm like, thank you. <laughs> yes. Nice. <laughs> well, well Nate, Nate's from while, Ohio. You gotta take it easy on him. About him. <laughs> I just Wait, remember it's, it's close enough to Ohio. He should know better. Ooh. You would think so. You would think so. <laughs> We went to a uh, barbecue joint in South Atlanta, uh, and it was very good. They had some things that I had never heard of before. Do you remember the name? I don't, but I can tell you it was a predominantly African-American restaurant. For sure. We were not given dirty looks. We were given odd looks when we walked in because it was just a bunch of white guys. <laughs> but their food was amazing. I, I, If I went back, I would go again in a heartbeat. I wouldn't care. Uh, but then, yeah, the next day we got up and went to the stadium. Uh, I mean, I think the, the team that we were playing was obviously better than us that day, but we had a lot of fun. We They held their own, did good. Uh, Luckily, our mascot or school was it named after someone who genocided Indians, though, Native Americans, so that's good. Yeah, I think they finally yeah. changed that name, who though, by the way. Who did we play? Amherst? As in yeah, Jeffrey they, Amherst, as in the guy who put the smallpox in a blanket and gave it to the Native uh, Americans. Yeah. Well, yeah. What was the mascot? The Lord oh, Jeffs. Oh, know. I thought you were going to say like the Poxers or something. Yeah. I was like, although I mean, I guess we're the Crusaders. You know, we had a couple <laughs> yeah. of uh, you know, uh, glass, I will say, glass houses and stuff. Hot meat all. kettle. <laughs> that, that was the same team that we were supposed to play the women in 2020 for the playoffs uh, up there. And then that's when the game got canceled. And they were like, yeah, for the benefit of everybody, we don't want anybody to get this disease while we're here. And I'm sitting there laughing. I'm like, that's kind of ironic. That's right. <laughs> that's right. I remember that. You know, going back to that barbecue place, because I can turn this into a food podcast real quick. <laughs> okay. Uh, have any of y'all ever had Gus's fried chicken from – it's an Atlanta place. You told me about it, and somebody no. else told me about it, but I've never Holy been. Holy moly. Yeah. It's, uh, we went there on the way through last summer on a mission trip. And I uh, texted Laura Phipps, who we should probably have on the podcast at yeah. some point. Uh, Absolutely. Atlanta, and I was like, hey, tell me the best local places to eat. And Gus's Fried Chicken came highly recommended. Uh, much like your experience, Andy. Uh, <laughs> I would say it was a very similar experience. Um, hey, they know how to cook. They got those spices yeah. that we don't yes. have. 
fried chicken. I will, I, I will throw one in with that too. Um, when we had Kane on last week, we were talking about how when I lived with Kane, his dad told me about a place in Tuscaloosa called Dreamlands. Oh and boy, yes. they're they're okay. ribs, dude. You got to get the dude, ribs there, dude. Okay, I, we all on this set that same trip. We stayed the night previous in Tuscaloosa, mm-hmm. and so I'm like, all right, I want to go to Dreamland. And yes, I don't like Southern barbecue. The, it, it's not my thing. My parents are think of me like I very much have embraced most of my Tennesseeness about mm-hmm. me still. But one thing that like Texas has just completely dominated is I don't do Southern style barbecue. What about gravy, but holy <laughs> moly, they had some of the best sausage I've ever had in my entire mm. life. Dreamland, amazing in Tuscaloosa, yeah. So, and I hate to admit it, it was up to it <laughs> because I don't like Southern barbecue and I don't like Alabama. So, yeah, yeah. But yeah, do you yeah. like gravy? I do like gravy. Only white gravy, though. Amen. That is a racist but acceptable upgrade to <laughs> what your answer used to be to that question. I was just looking forward to bleeping myself. Now I don't get to. So, yeah. um, <laughs> that also was the year because of those trips. And I, I mean, I didn't go. I was sitting at Sully's Grill in College Station trying to watch the UMHB game, and mm. they had a network connection issue. And oh, they're gosh. like, oh, we'll just switch to this other game. And I'm the one guy in the whole place like no no no, no. mary harden baylor and all these aggies are like what i was like Trust excuse me, me. <laughs> it's a big game we don't get many of those yep um so i the two teams i was so sick of umhb people rooting for were the colts and the braves after that because you had a bunch of umhb students who were only there because it was a free trip who didn't even follow mm-hmm. umhb sports and then acted like they were the biggest braves fans in the world i'm like at least look i'm an astros fan but at least root for the rangers like pick a texas team we got two go with that and then what got me was the uh the colts because i now i would root for jarrell like i was like i want him okay. to succeed i want his stats to be the best on that team i just can't root for his whole team <laughs> well, yeah. for a cowboys fan to be like you know if a umhb player went on to be a star for the eagles or the giants or something and then like everyone at umhb is rooting for them it's like oh well, this is painful when nate minkin was on their practice squad for a little while i was yeah. like oh this sucks because i don't want to root for them but i'm friends with this guy <laughs> yeah uh, i was I, and i saw jarrell one time i was like hey dude you're, you're gonna you know move to houston he, he just kind of laughed he's like no nah. <laughs> but that, so that was don't, don't I, hate I really because was, i have his jersey from no. I, have, I have his gold's jersey yeah it was but like Dude, you really? and i actually oh, yeah. you, you and i i remember that you and i had actually met like i couldn't stand how people would like wouldn't go to crew games and then when jarell graduated they're trying to line up to take pictures with him i'm like you yeah. you and you yeah. criticized yeah. me for watching that guy yes exactly now but shout out jarell i really hope you'll be on this podcast eventually because yeah um <laughs> Tyler, when you led, I was talking about how uh, UMHB students rooting for the Braves and the Colts that year were very obnoxious. Because I was like, dude, you've been to one game and you know one player. So, speaking of that, <laughs> oh, I, I never I know really had a baseball team, and I, I've had this weird relation with baseball. My dad, call it, call it Division One college baseball player, really wanted me to get into it. Did not know that. Tested it as a kid, and then as I got older, um. It kind of just felt like I was missing out on the baseball thing. I didn't like the sport, but it, it is fun to go, and it just feels just American to be a yeah. baseball fan and watch baseball. And be, so I being that. there is the key. Like I have a hard yeah. time, even when it's my team, I have a hard time sitting and watching on TV. But the smell of the ballpark, yeah. The atmosphere. So we we go to that game, and it was such an amazing game. The Upton brothers. It was just electric. I had such a blast. And so I'm like, you know what? I'll be a Braves fan. I'll watch baseball. <laughs> I tried so hard for the rest of that spring to like get myself yeah. into it. You, know, you, you missed what we had just said. Yeah, I was. It's so funny. Yeah, uh, yeah. We, we were just talking about how like UMHB were like oh, baseball fans now. Yeah, it's like yeah, you that, know, yeah, I was one of those. People. <laughs> uh, but it didn't last because baseball bores me. I I knew the point in my life when I had to just completely give up on baseball. I turned on the World Series. Game what, seven. What year? Innings. I'm getting there. <laughs> Chicago and oh well, yeah. Cleveland, I think it was. Yes. Cleveland won a World Series. 
it's game mm. seven in extra innings. Like th- they're literally like, this is as good as it can get. Mm-hmm. And I remember going, okay, I'm bored. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah. If this is boring me, then like, I just, why, why even force me? Yes. It, it, if that was boring you, cause that was, uh, I was on the edge of my seat. Like I was out of, out of my chair, like watching, like, this is amazing. I don't like either team. Yeah. Uh, Speaking of, the women took off and they won by fourteen, so they're going on to the next oh, round. Wow, Tyler, what you may be ahead of me on. Quarters? Do what? What round are they going to? I think I think now it's the semifinals. Okay, dude, such a bad podcast host. I saw. I thought <laughs> the, the attorneys were at, oh, on the weekend. Uh, so the first the first round or whatever this is, it was just because there's only six teams, so two, the top two seeds had a bye. And so the first two games were at the upper higher seeds home, and then they all go somewhere for the last two games. This this year, I think this is new. Okay. Um, speaking of basketball, have you watched much Cree basketball this year? I've been watching as much as I can. Yeah, and it's been fun to watch. It has. I you know at the start of the season, I was really disappointed because we got a bunch of losses right off the bat, and I thought. Yep. Um, you know, this well, especially like we were ranked year. like number four or something. Yeah, we were like had a lot of hype because we had a great year last year, and most of the people came back. And I'm thinking, like, ah, whatever, this sucks, uh, not great. Then we beat Texas State. Yeah, uh, that's what did it. And then we <laughs> haven't. I don't think we've lost since. <laughs> I I don't know. Maybe, maybe I don't know, but we're, yeah, we're it was on a four, the men are ending <laughs> on a 14 game win streak. I need to give but a I shout left. out, Cliff Carroll. Uh, Coach Cliff mm. Carroll was one of the first people to listen to my uh, newly released albums and give it <laughs> feedback on Twitter while he was on the team bus. That nice. was a really, I haven't even met him in person, but that was a really cool moment. Of course, the third song he heard was an old one that was just terrible. I'm like, eh, maybe you can go back to the new ones. But um, Well, I, I knew I'd like him as soon as he got hired and I heard his name to sons of William Whalen. <laughs> Will, yeah, I saw that. I'm like, he left Solar Ross for UMHB. All right. <laughs> Yeah. I'm, gl- I'm glad he's here. Um, I, will, <laughs> I will say uh, I, I kind of want to revert back to before that 2013 era because um, there, were, there were a few items. So back when the Friar Tuck group was in its heyday, especially that first year. So I've said on previous podcasts, you were kind of like, I, I say the getaway driver, but uh, <laughs> I, I've never really given the, the, the context on that. So y'all, Andy drove this uh, F-350 that we called Big Red. And that thing seated like seven people. And so it just made the most <laughs> sense that right. we would get into Andy's truck. Um, and so, but I, I like to joke that he was the getaway driver. Cause if we were up to something, that's usually what we were riding in. Um, for you, I don't, you weren't a quiet one, but sometimes like, like what Tyler pointed out, I think on Nathan's episode is that you would kind of like provide logistical support mm-hmm. or in, or like back is it you were what is on that spider-man movie the man with the computer or the guy in the chair I was about and the to guy say. in the chair <laughs> so the guy in the chair as the guy in the chair like what are some of your memories of moments where it's like are these idiots really about to do this or like what what were some of your like we probably shouldn't go here but here we are kind of things oh well i mean obviously number one is going to be the whitewater thing yeah, yeah. <laughs> just because we got it all taken we got it all done and i was like are we really actually going to do this so yeah that has to be up there um i don't know if garrett you were there but we were in abilene for a basketball game with uh, a certain person that was trying to start stuff i think oh, Ty- <laughs> this is when we went there for two games yeah they we were there for thursday and saturday the same way this year where the thursday yeah. and saturday game mcmurray harden simmons and we were just like yeah let's do both it was great and uh, yeah, so the oh. game ended. I think we had won. It was a close game, and like their fans were really angry with us uh, because somebody—I'm not going to say his name—was uh, just trying to start it, yeah. and to the point where he was literally going to go and fight with them. And I was just like, "Dude, don't wait, do wait, this." Wait, wait, one one of our guys was going to go fight them. Yes. Oh, yes. Okay. So- you know, most of the normal couch crew guys, like, we try to be funny, and we do chants, and we, like, focus on what's going on in the game. Mm-hmm. We don't really trash talk. Like, we're not, like, hurling insults over at, like, students. Right. Person was. <laughs> um, you know, and... He was being I a legitimate really hooligan. I strongly believed at the time a crusader never walks alone, <laughs> and so I didn't want to let him do this on his own, but I, uh, you know... 
So it was. It was I, like, I was about like, to. I was about to let him go. <laughs> like, no, you were not done. <laughs> It's better. Like, it's uh, better than the time uh, Daniel Smith and I didn't know that Tatenda was still in U- UTD's gym because he had turned around to go talk to somebody and we thought he'd gone out to the car. So we turned around and we went, "Some I forgot who it was that we yelled at. You suck!" And then we just like ran out and I, t- I hear Tatenda behind me and I was like, "Oh my gosh, <laughs> we just screwed him over." And I want to say that trip we lost the McMurray game. And uh, that I do remember, we, and I wasn't even okay, in yeah. old man as we walked out. You looked at us and was like, all that stomping of them boots didn't do y'all no good. Yeah. And I what did you what did you say? What did you say? Back? I didn't say anything. Uh, I didn't say what did a I say? word. Uh, yeah, what did Tyler say? <laughs> was it? That, was, that was me trying to do a dolphin. <laughs> I think Kane and I broke the dolphin record on the last episode. <laughs> Somebody was, I think it was Emily texted me and goes, did you and Kane break Preach's record? I'm like, probably. I don't know. Mm. <laughs> Shout out, Preach. All right. Um, well, that was a fun trip, though. Uh, you know, yeah. what cow swings are. Uh, you know, the same individual. Uh, <laughs> a city uh, kid, you know, uh, didn't get out of the Beltway 8 very much. And he saw um, the um, those uh, things that, irrig- those, <clears throat> that the irrigation system, that yeah. Spin around on, on a pivot kind of rained down the water and he was like what is that and i don't know who said it maybe it was me maybe it was Andy. i don't i really don't know who but someone just sarcastic was like oh it's a cow swing and he was like what do you need a swing for cows for and then we just kind of went with it yep. uh, but we're like well you know it helps them like relax and you can like work with them and milk them while they're swinging <laughs> And tyler it was really good at trolling people that we traveled to evelyn with because i remember in 2011 we were in the car with Zach Martin and when it, we'll have Zach on this podcast and I'll give more details about that miserable car ride. But if you've seen the, how I met your mother episode where the same cassette tape is stuck playing the same song, it that happened to us. Oh, so no. we're, we're driving and Zach had never been to Abilene before. And there's like that airport or something out in the middle of nowhere. And uh, Tyler with a straight face and not skipping beats like, well, yeah, that's like their Naval Academy branch. There's a branch down here. Zach's like, what? And he's like, yeah, there's a Naval Academy in Abilene. You didn't know that? <laughs> And Zach, so <laughs> Zach spends the next day convinced that the fourth major school in Abilene is the Naval Academy Abilene campus. Wow. And Tyler finally loses his composure, and Zach was so pissed. And I'm, like, in the backseat cracking up laughing. But that was uh, that was pretty gold. Um, I, I want to go towards – so, like, we, we've had the moments where you were like, are we really about to do this? But – um one thing we've asked all the other dudes was like what's your favorite thing about those other guys because each like it's it's weird we're a good collective group but each guy is so different and depending on which combo of us get together depends on like Mm -hmm. the different kind of time we're gonna have oh wow yeah (laughs) well i'll give yourself a time to think because i already have my answer for you and i'm gonna share it you mean Uh, for each guy or what well, yeah, just in just, general, like all together. Yeah. Either way. Okay. Yeah, how, however you want to do it. Because I think uh, shoot. Na- Na- Nathan and I went individual and Kane went group, I think. Yeah. Okay. Well. For you individually, um, I would say it's two things. It's your, your generosity, incredibly mm. generous person. Uh, mm. And then it's also uh, your willingness to just like go do something. You're like, well, <laughs> okay, yeah, let's go. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> like, just like get in a car and drive for hours somewhere. It's like, oh, yeah. Yeah, just some, or like get online and buy some stupid thing because, like, when you bought like 30 Vuvuzelas after the 22 <laughs> World Cup, like, yeah, let's do it. Let's go for it. I'll, I'll talk about that in a second. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but no, uh, I'd say just, I mean, for the most part, with all of it, all of us, it's just the fact that we're all just ready to have fun. Mm. Uh, but then, obviously, if you want to add, include brett on his own because that dude just makes us laugh because he'll just be sitting there yeah. saying nothing and then he'll say the funniest thing out of nowhere and we'll all just die falling on the floor laughing <laughs> oh i hope brett i hope we can get brett on here pretty soon because uh his yeah. coaching his coaching schedule eliminates <laughs> tuesdays and so we're, we're working on making that happen but yeah that i just i i, I was looking up pictures for when we did the intro to this and i think the first picture i had saved was one of you and kane uh, it was it was Andy and Kane smoking cigars by the the Bell Circle. Senior Bell, yeah. Dubbing. So so funny, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I'm just because it's so funny. Like I, 
I don't know how many groups leave college and can say this when they're 34, 35, 33 years old, but it's like, we still text, even if it's just somebody sends a stupid meme once a week or something, it's like, oh, yeah. there's still an open communication with like six guys. And it's, but I, that the last time we were all in the actual same room was probably because Kane didn't even make that reunion. So it was probably like 2015 it was the last time, like the combo of us was probably a wedding or something well yeah because like brett wasn't at tyler's bachelor party but we had flat brett so yeah, yeah, we did. in, in, no, in essence oh, yeah no you're yeah. right my bad in, in I was essence thinking wedding. Like, no he was at my wedding yeah <laughs> that's true i do remember um so yeah i sorry my light is going crazy here um <laughs> yeah but I, I i do remember that dynamic because i you and brett i remember one time y'all were playing uh ncaa or something Oh yeah. And it was like a close game or something. And you know, Brett's a coach. And so coaching is his craft. So when you're playing in CAA with him, like don't beat the guy or he's going to be mad. So Andy wins in overtime and this is at mm. Turtle Creek. And Brett just like, we're probably about two or three minutes. Like, well guys, I gotta go. <laughs> and so he stands up and we're like, it's good to see you, man. You know, he's leaving and uh, he starts to open the door and Andy Andy's like expressionless, and then Andy grins and he just looks and goes, "Later, bit." <laughs> Brett just kind of looks down, like really, <laughs> just walks out. Well, it's one of those like I don't remember that one specifically, but I mean, he beat me basically every time we ever played, and it was like yeah. the one time I finally beat him. <laughs> there was always feel like there was a couple like different like pairs of dudes who had great chemistry together or like mm. they would be funny individually but they they would really play off each other well like for me like that was me and zach martin when we got yes. <laughs> together like we were like getting each other going <laughs> and i feel like your guy like that for sure yeah we used to I joke so. about like we, we wanted to have like a sports talk show uh, <laughs> with you and brett and I, like, I don't know if we could ever get anything done. I believe if we'd have somehow got y'all on ESPN Central Texas, if you didn't get yourselves canceled, it would have been like a hit. Yeah. <laughs> so I don't think we'd have ever gotten past the first topic. That's here's what we. That's what we need. We need a spinoff podcast of this. You and you and Brett just doing sports. <laughs> you know those videos on YouTube where YouTubers will react to another YouTube video. Like, yeah. Like two guys react to purple gold. <laughs> look at this idiot over here i have a question um i remember one time so right after college i was you know both of you are talking about how weird it is to go back on campus right after Mm -hmm. you've graduated and like i would come back to see hannah and i was like we were all in the spotlight for the the couch crew stuff but i was like i don't even know how to describe it it was just one of those burnout burnout and vilification mixed together along with having a bunch of people who knew who I was, not their freshmen that I've never met was just weird. Like that added a weird mm-hmm. layer to it. I was like, I don't want to be. And there were a couple of people I was feuding with. It was just a weird deal. So like, I just tried to kind of lay low when I came back to town, but mm-hmm. I remember one trip I was going to the bra. Okay. No listeners. There was an apartment we called the brothel. I almost just said we were going to the brothel. There was an, <laughs> there was a, an apartment with four text matters four yes four very sweet girls who you would never find at a brothel one of them thought we learned last week it's you know a term of endearment so (laughs) yeah well one of those girls thought brothel was a term for monastery and so she go around saying we love the brothel and i it was a semester in before did her name start with k no um (laughs) it was it was another one uh but i i remember andy walks over and he's got this girl with him and she's looking at us like, who are these loud idiots and why am I here? And Andy looks at me and goes, dude. He's like nodding over his shoulder. I was like, what? I see the girl. And he's like, go look for it. And I was like, you're going, she wouldn't date any of us. Good luck with that. And like a week later, I see Andy and Abby are together. And I'm like, okay, I need to learn more <laughs> about this Abby person because that came out of nowhere. So how did you and Abby meet? Uh, through Eddie. Uh, oh, okay. They, did we did we talk about this on the last podcast? And I'm having a memory lapse. I mean, maybe I don't really know. If we don't remember, then the listeners then the listeners won't it. tell us again. So, tell basically, two different stories. Uh, <laughs> what was it? The family groups. They were uh, her and Eddie were in the same family group, and we knew Eddie obviously from his time coming down, and you knew him from Canyon. Yeah. And I, uh, it was obviously it was through the Rangers in the playoffs in the World Series. Uh, 
and they came over to watch a game and that's just kind of how I met her. And the details are kind of funny because I that was the night I had first cut a mohawk into my hair. And so it was not even up. It was still down. And she looked at me like, who is this crazy person? But then, of course, a few days later, I cut it off. And I was like, oh, it's, it's him. <laughs> but yeah, it was because of the Rangers in the playoffs. And I knew them and we met. And just like the that. The rest is history. Yeah. I, I, I would love <laughs> to have Abby on here for an episode. I feel like that would be a really fun interview. Yeah, no kidding. If you can get her, good yeah. luck. <laughs> I, I, I was kind of hoping you would say, I'll, I'll get her to do it. <laughs> yeah. no, it's, about that one. I, one of the cool things about being friends in such close proximity, proximity with one another at this point in your life when you're in college is like you see these like you're there for like these big moments that you're just going to remember yeah. forever. Like mm-hmm. when you were getting ready to propose, you know, you got that Harry Potter book. Uh, mm-hmm. you used to propose. And I just remember like, hey, let's like go to Mark <laughs> Noble and Colleen together, Harker Heights or whatever. And so it was just, it was this random thing. Like you go and do this important thing. And I'm just like, you're like, hey, you want to come along? I'm like, sure. Uh, the, the, <laughs> the, the funny thing is. Got so upset. <laughs> <laughs> she she calls, she's like, what are you doing? I was like, well, we're at Barnes and Noble with Tyler. And she looks at me and she calls me on the phone. She was like, there's no way you would never be there. Where are you doing? And she thought I was lying out of my teeth. I'm like, what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> yeah we we uh we weren't exactly known to just like go hang out at a bookstore together <laughs> no we're, at least one of you had to be were either of you there the time my senior year we did randomly just go to barnes and noble i, I think hannah and i want to mm-hmm. i want to say it was hannah and rachel it was hannah and one of the other girls i think nathan may have been there I, i'm fuzzy on who all was there but we we loosely using that term were there and uh a book had been misplaced it was like the home and gardening or cooking section or something and there was this um love positions book with oh. actual photos just sitting right there where like a kid could see it or something i'm like well, this needs to be moved and being the group that we were we we're like but first let's see what's in it and so we're just standing there in the middle of like the cooking aisle reading this book and we're like let's just randomly send this to somebody I think Rebecca Macklin was going to go with us, but she had to go to RA duty that night. And I was like, let's just take a picture of this page with no context and just send it to her. Don't know why. So I send this raunchy photo and it, I'm thinking, okay, you know, in a little while she'll get the text or whatever. Immediate response of, ew, why would you send me this? And I was like, you know, that's a valid question. I, I don't know. Cause we're weird. <laughs> so that's why she was always so mad at you. <laughs> I don't remember being mad at me. No, <laughs> okay, no. Just, uh, okay. <laughs> another host of this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> that I remember. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Anyway, it, how about them cowboys? Yeah. <laughs> now, uh, so so you met Abby through Eddie, and uh, I, now that I'm thinking about, it, I think I think you had mentioned that before, and I just mm-hmm. plum forgot. But, um, what are some things like? At, how often do you get to go back to campus? Cause I know the last couple of times we've looked at going to a football game together, we haven't been able to. So when, like, when's the last time you've gotten to really visit town? Oh gosh. It's been a while now. Um, I mean, maybe that crazy Harden Simmons game. Oh, what? Was it that, game that we were it, at together? It had to have been. I mean, I it was. Yeah. yeah. I just, I find it wild that, you know, it's, all the hoops we had to jump through to get our group back together. And I wish Kane and Emily could have made it. And I know Catherine was going to be there and couldn't like there were, there were a few people that wanted to be there and I wish they could have, but mm-hmm. to have like 90% of us back together and that be how not a, that be the game and B for it to go the way it did. I was just like, I'm never going to top this for a whole we, new MHB game. I don't care. We did not deserve to win that game. No, like, nope. we, we, we were not the better team that year. And mm. yet somehow we were, <laughs> You know, turning this back to food, my second favorite memory <laughs> from that weekend, well, the first was obviously the kick, but the second was the night before, mm-hmm. a couple of us went out to eat at Alexander's in Salado, and yeah. I got that fried chicken with crumbled up uh, Captain Crunch cereal in its batter, and it was just Ooh. amazing, and I've thought about that ever since. <laughs> I just remember, and I won't name names here because I will get slapped if I do, but there was somebody who was going to sign, bring the box out of retirement in our backyard, and but it was like 20 degrees. We're like, no, we're not doing this. No. So it's like, we'll do it tomorrow night after the game. You know, it's like, all right. By the time that game ended, we were so tired. We're all sitting at dinner oh, yeah. like this. <laughs> Like people that aren't took, even that like took every talking. ounce of my life out of it. It was crazy. 
I, I, I just, I, I got to fact check us here. It was not that homecoming. It was the next home Harden Simmons game where we also almost like we were getting blown out at halftime. Oh, that game. Yeah, yeah that was later. That's, That's right. Because right. y'all were no, above Nathan. Game. Nathan and I were the deck below y'all to the corner. We were, it was like the whole game. I thought we had the worst seats in the stadium because we're in the most random corner. Mm-hmm. And it turned out to be the best view yeah. of that yeah. last play. I mean, we saw the ball go into his hands. Yeah. I mean, it was just yeah. like. Wow, that my fav- was great. My, that and my other favorite moment of that game was running up the stairs to where y'all were. <laughs> just <laughs> doing that. <something. laughs> that game was one, honestly, of the last several years. Had some of my favorite memories of just like hanging out with Andy and Abby. It'd been a while since we'd hung out. My wife Emily was there too, and both of our daughters Ali mm-hmm. and Bailey were like hanging out, running around on campus together. Like this is really cool. Like <laughs> we met each other running around causing trouble on this campus, and now we've got our two little daughters doing the same thing. You know, mm-hmm. just, and we, that was that was fun. I love. And that. it gave us the brief return of the couch crew, so that was kind of cool. <laughs> yeah, um, exactly. So speaking of crew sports and daughters, though, uh, let me ask you. Um, Bailey lately has really get into watching sports with me. And so when she sees, you know, Austin, SC, Tennessee or UHB on TV, she's like, dad, dad, it's them. And like, she'll, she'll start cheering. And I know you said up. go dad, but it really sounded like you just said. <laughs> 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 and, and so, uh, is that case for you? Is, does Ali, uh, watch any crew with you? Is, is there any sort of like crew love that, that Ali has from having two crusader parents? I don't know if it's actual crew love yet, but she definitely just loves watching the sports with me because she knows that's what I like. Exactly. Uh, so yes, she definitely like she like oh, it's football, it's football, whether or not it's football or not is regardless <laughs> beside the point. Uh, she we went to a Stars game the other day, took her for the first time, and she had a ball blast there, so it was great. That's I guess amazing. you can't have a ball that. at the Stars game. <laughs> um, yeah, so, true. Dude, by the way, this is so off topic, but I'll veer back in. Uh, it was really cool getting to watch the Canes play the other night because it was the stadium series. And because of COVID, they were supposed to do that like two years ago. Like they haven't oh, been right? able to, yeah, like the Raleigh one has been pushed for two years. So when I was, I went to a Canes game in Raleigh last year and they were already advertising it, even though it was still, because uh, if anyone knows that area, which I don't think anyone listening to this podcast, <laughs> I don't know why I said that, uh, PNC arena where the Canes play is like, not even a football field length walk to the front gates of NC state's football stadium. So it's literally, it's like they share a parking lot. So it was the easiest stadium series to do, but they sold out in minutes. And so it was really cool getting to watch like a packed college football stadium. And then that previous weekend, I was watching part of the clash, the Coliseum where they tried to do a NASCAR race in a college football stadium. And it was the weirdest race I think I've ever watched, but all that to say, yeah. uh, my, my daughter is only eight months old and she's already, she giggles at sports. So like if sports is on, every time the announcers say something, there's a, uh, they show the fans, but she'll like, ha ha ha, she'll like laugh or something, slam her toy mm-hmm. down. But uh, I've noticed the other day we were watching um, the top Houston Rockets highlights of the last decade. Very short video. I'm um, say, is there anything on there? <laughs> uh, I, feel, I feel like we've been bad forever. We really haven't, but it just, it was, yeah, but she she was looking. I'd never showed her basketball before. So every time they ran up the court, she put her hand out and started doing it. She was trying to grab the basketball every oh, time. And so nice. I, I was like, well, she's going to be a little sports watcher for sure. Yeah, it's I love watching and making those memories with your kids, you know, because you, you like I think back to early sports memories with my dad. I'm like, man, we're like we're doing the same thing again. You know, Bailey started to really love soccer. So we go to Austin FC games together and you talked about wanting to go back to UHB. Although it's funny about going to these Austin FC games is some like words she has picked up. Not Uh-oh. bad words. Oh. Just not English. <laughs> uh, okay. <laughs> Cause we were watching something at home. I don't, it wasn't even soccer or anything. And she goes, Tay, Tay. I'm like, you've been to too many Austin FC games. <laughs> Well, you could take her to another stadium in Austin if she wants to learn the bad ones. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <that's> okay. <laughs> or get bitten by a child because I was like, who lets their what? kid run around biting people? And, th- and he bit Seth. Who lets their kid walk up and bite Seth in the arm? That's what I want to know. But the parent watched it happen. I just, Seth looks up and Seth, you know, kind of gets that wide eyed look and he's like, whose kid is this? <laughs> who lets their kid bite people? Um, speaking of Seth, I remember a crew sports memory where he asked somebody about their daughter, but, uh, that's, that's a whole other thing. I, I, I gotta wonder 
what it was like to be the driver on our trip to Mississippi with three of oh. us. <laughs> well, the, the drive too was fine. Uh, <laughs> except, it was except just... for the one hour song. <laughs> oh, well, yeah. That was a highlight. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> Folks, no, that, that, pine that, trees that on trip. both sides with a one hour song remix going will just loop your brain. Yeah. Dude, that I ten through the south, man. It's it's awful. <laughs> uh, it's the pine. I call it the tree tunnel because, like, yeah. I did this so many times going back to Tennessee as a kid. I'm like the tree tunnel. It's just hours and hours. That's all you see, except for maybe a Waffle House every now and then. True. Yeah. Ten is terrible, especially Louisiana when you hit that bridge, that twenty mile bridge over the water. And oh like, God. You break down. You can't really get off there anywhere. But. Uh. Yes. No. Uh, that gas station stop. Uh, <laughs> was interesting i'll say that but i was like as soon as i heard homecoming i was like time to go time to go Windows. i'm driving i'm leaving bye <laughs> that just wow yeah i we can't even get in that that'd be another <laughs> podcast of its own but i've taken three trips to mississippi college two of them were well i can't say two were good three were good it's just one of them had just the worst fallout and uh, however, how many years later would it have been? Uh, five years later, four and a half. I was I had gone to a wedding around 2014 in North Carolina, and we drove. So we're going back through the South, you know, and we're going through Mississippi. And Hannah was not real happy with me because I, you know, I she was tired. And then I had that was when I insist we have to stop at Dreamland Barbecue, and it was so out of the way. It was just like I'm tired. Let's go. So we get back, and Hannah hadn't said much. She's like reading a book or something. She closes her book. And we're driving through Clinton, Mississippi. And I don't say anything. And all I hear, and if you know Hannah, she she has a soft, quiet voice. And I love that. And she looks at me and goes, well, are you going to do it? I was like, what? She goes, the fountain. I was like, oh, yeah, we made a promise. Uh, if any of us ever went back, we were going to color the fountain purple. So Hannah and I go to Walmart, buy a bunch of purple Gatorade, and we take a nice. Dip. And first, I like I actually walked her through campus. I was like, "Here's where this happened. Here's where that happened." And we walk over the fountain, and I unloaded the purple into the water, and then we well, and we there were a lot of people out and about that night too. So we told them we were on a scavenger hunt, and we were carrying these bottles. We had to get them somewhere. And then uh, at the fountain, I was like, "Hey, scavenger hunt! Can you take a picture of the fountain or whatever?" And like ah, and then they turn around. And I just like dump it and leave. So. <laughs> Uh, I, that was Hannah was involved with one shenanigan uh, nice. that was based off the Tup groups. <laughs> She's gonna get home and be like, "You told that story." I'm like, "Yeah, yeah I'm warming up for your episode." So, <laughs> yeah. nice. uh, what? What? Uh, I'm so I'm trying to think. Any random memories that probably haven't been brought up brought up on the podcast about that whole era that stick out to you, just like funny or whatever else. Well. I think we have to talk about the day that we went first went to Crusader Pizza. I think oh, we have to do that. We have to, yeah. Uh, For those that know want, want to know, he's talking about the pizza place that Tyler and I covered on the intro episode to Friar Tuck and Brent Lloyd, yeah. the pizza man. So uh, why don't you – wasn't it the day of the uh, – Yeah, so we had... rainy, depressing day. Uh, yeah when they announced the SGA race, I, I already knew who won. I just couldn't tell anybody. I, I go to the chapel and we do the whole public spectacle. I'm like, all right, you know, I walked over and, uh, it, and folks, I wasn't like depressed that I lost. I was bummed out over some things that went on surrounding this event that was held in the chapel. Um, after I'd been banned for speaking politically in the chapel, there was a big political event. It was just kind of weird to watch. So Andy and bringing politics into religion, politics and religion. <laughs> Uh, and so Andy was, Andy walks up to me and, uh, not to get all weird or mushy, but and Andy is a good bro. Y'all like if, if any of us, like something was hitting us heavy, like Andy was one of the first people, like, Hey, let's just get you out for a while. So this was the first, one of the, one of the getaway driver moments. He's like, I'm literally going to get you away from campus. Let's just go. So I hop in the truck and I'm just like, Oh, I just want to get out of the city, you know, all this stuff. And we go to this little pizza place that I'd never heard of. I don't even know Andy, how we found it. No, it's like we, I think we saw the word pizza or something. And yeah. so Andy goes in before me. I had to call home. So my parents yes. hadn't gotten the full update on things going on that day. And so I'm talking to my dad for a while. And where I'll drop my story off is I walk in finally, and Andy is already in tears laughing. And he's pointing 
And Brent's looking up at me like, how's it going? And so I don't have a clue what I'm missing. And I will let Andy take it from here. So I walk up to the counter and he's like, so we've got pizza. It's I think whatever day it was, they had dollar pizza slice night. And so we was like, all right, we'll, we'll take some slices. And so he starts making them and then he just starts talking. And I don't, I'm not sure I could actually say anything I don't at I what was said, I but I'm just sitting there going, I, I, I'm laughing partially because it's funny and partially because it's, I, I don't want to look like I'm just so awkwarded out that I'm going to have to leave. And I'm just like, Garrett, can you please get in here? I need some help. And then I was, I was legitimately <laughs> laughing because it was some of the funniest. So I had gone from super depressed to like, this is the funniest moment of the year, like in five seconds. So mm -hmm. I, all I will say is the first thing he had talked about when I walked in was a world history lesson. And the... That was not in your history books. No. <laughs> it was there. It was just different. Um, It was... Uh, the the other thing was the University of Miami and his deep hatred for that school, and so it, which you know none of us were huge like like Andy liked Miami, but like we weren't like Miami fans, you know. So it was just it, and uh, Brent was a big Nebraska guy, so he's telling us that another uh, there was always a, a sports based story with him, mm -hmm. such as the time they gutted an actual Longhorn steer and draped it over the Welcome to Nebraska State sign, so when the Texas bus came in, they could just like see it. Um, and there, he would be an interesting podcast. I so oh, folks, I, I saw him the other night. He would be canceled. <laughs> he would be canceled for sure. Uh, I shout out Brent if you're watching. I know he's seen this podcast before. Uh, I ran into Brent at Walmart a few nights ago, and so it was it was really cool getting to run into him. Uh, it, it's just like I start I grin the moment I see him because it's just like I mm -hmm. think back to our biggest frustrations in college. We didn't go to the bar. We went to the pizza place. Like we were. <laughs> Some people say y'all really were Baptist. No, it was just there was some sort of it relief. Was, it was better. It, yeah, it was our cheers, and we would bring other people guy, there. You know? Yeah, <laughs> he was and, our pizza dealer. Yeah, <laughs> that's what we said dealer, yeah. certain certain things that were yelled, such as uh, "Everybody run! It's the cops!" and these two police are walking in. <laughs> and then uh, there was one time he went on a rant. I think he was in in agreement with us about something that was going on at the school and. He turns around to put the pizza in the oven. He's just like, and F anyone that disagrees, F those guys. And he turns around, this lady had walked in, and he's like, ma'am, I'm so sorry. These guys are supposed to let me know when someone wants it. I was like, don't put this on me. It was that, I think it was that same day. We, I, I was with you. We were complaining about just the way things are being run at the school. Mm -hmm. I'm I'm gonna edit some stuff here, so and don't not freak out. not being yeah. run by everyone. To anyone at the school who's watching, we weren't complaining about everything, just certain <laughs> little things yeah. that were. And so we were complaining about a certain individual who liked to give us a hard time, and um, he apparently Brent knew this guy from way back in the day when they were young, and he said, you know, if he ever gives you a hard time again, you need you just. Call him this nickname. He called us the nickname. And what like, what does that mean? And he tells us a story from oh, this man. individual's life as a younger, uh, less mature, uh, uh, godly man. I sworn maybe. somebody else told us that story. No. Mm -mm. no. Mm -mm. Really? Because we already knew it before then. I knew uh, that story. Oh. Hmm. Maybe you're thinking of what, the nickname? No, yeah, the I'm thinking of a certain somebody that you used to troll people on the internet with. And that was a story he shared. Mm -mm. oh this is a yeah and cool. uh yeah and so anyway it was just it's great to to know stories about people giving you a hard time realizing that they were once upon a time uh more than a little rowdy themselves oh yeah and, mm -hmm. uh, that's all i can say because this individual still works there i would say there was one game where it came close my senior year and i think i, I was talking to andy it came close to what Ye yelling oh the nickname. chanting yeah. the nickname like yeah. we had gotten stifled so bad i was like nobody in the stands will know what this means <laughs> do it and like we didn't end up yeah. doing it our better judgment prevailed but we had a serious like little mini conference to be like let's just do it like i was so mad but oh well that dude's always been nice to me outside of school so <laughs> If you're wondering what the uh, name was, just think of a certain uh, college uh, from uh, Fort Worth. Yeah, yeah. yeah <laughs> Texas exactly. Wesleyan. All right. <laughs> oh, I think wow. there's also a dealership in Belton with that name. Yeah, ah, yes, yeah, there is. True. There is. <laughs> yep. 
Oh my goodness. I'm I'm like now I'm nervous. <laughs> I'm like tensing up like, oh I'm gonna you know get a phone funny? call. You know what's funny then? Different I think different stories make it's us each other nervous. Cause like that isn't oh, who cares? Like whatever. I, I don't but, like, care the stories about this in the one. last two weeks with Kane and Nathan, I was like <laughs> Yeah, there'd be times I, I, where I'm like, where is this going? <laughs> Because <laughs> we, we we throw each other under the bus without meaning to. Like I, I tell a story about a rager that we threw in Kane's house that his parents didn't know about. And his parents are watching the podcast. <laughs> I, I just know I this the partic- statute of limitations has passed on that. Oh one. yeah, this particular guy was telling us to quiet down and sit down at a national championship yeah. football game. I have no concerns over what he thinks. Oh, we weren't even students at that point. No. Oh, well, no, that was that was later. I mean, there's just yeah. there's incidents. I, I, have... I, I remember texting my family and being like, guess what I just got told and by whom in my 30s. You know, it was just like, I thought why? Dawson was going to kill him. Oh, it was. <laughs> yeah, well, it, I, it, it, I went right like back into being just a... a couple of us standing up yelling, drawing attention to ourselves, like in a crowd where nobody else no. is like, in has the same vibe like i get it read the room a little bit three no, rows every, yeah it's a football game it, well and, I, I, and the I people remember, behind us were having fun with us too yeah and so that's what kind of, kind of was when he's like if y'all don't sit down the people behind you can't see and i turned around, i was like can y'all see okay and they were like yeah uh, i turned i was like they're good so I'm like uh i think that was the one time i yelled this ain't church <laughs> yeah, yeah. you're braver <laughs> when you're not a student anymore you know? true <laughs> He should have seen that Tyler was texting everybody at the end of that game. <laughs> you think that's bad? <laughs> mm. I have hey, no hey, it, supersti- yeah. superstitions are only weird if they don't work. Oh, that, well, <laughs> they yeah, they do, or they did work at four times. Yeah, I just I love the picture of the crowd where we're all like, uh, and Tyler's on his phone looking down, and I was like, that's it looks it. like it looks like he's disinterested, but he was I'm, not. You know, I I am doing the Lord's work. <laughs> I got to go back and find that one in the Bible. I really had forgotten oh, the story of him getting on to us as grown men. That, yeah. And, and like, he acted like, it, look, we were still students. Like, it's, that was the frustration, even as a student. At times, as much as I love my alma mater, they they treated it like summer camp or something. Oh, yeah. Uh, like, I remember uh, a bunch of people got stopped from skimboarding after a heavy rain outside McLean mm. because they could get hurt or, you know, mm. like we're, we're, we're adults, you know, I know we're in school, but we're adults. So like, that'd be normal. I have a question and, and here's, here's, and this is obviously not something that is happening or ever will, but I, I thought of this one day I was watching like, you know, they'll bring back alumni or like, it's like, high schools will bring back their their state champion golf team and at halftime they'll get like a recognition like if the school called like if steve theodore called and said hey we want the old couch crew guys for one game just as a throwback <clears throat> would you do it like front okay. row actually so, doing the stuff something like that did happen when i was like a sophomore I don't remember who they were, but it was the dude who wore like overalls and had uh, the whiteboard. Yeah, it was Andrew Harris, who was far yeah. worse than we ever were. So I was kind of mad they brought him back. I'm like, this guy was meaner than any of us. Yeah. Uh, but if, for so your actual question. Oh, sorry. Would, not not mean in general, just mean like at the game. Sorry, Andrew. Yeah. <laughs> um, it would definitely have to be who asks us mm-hmm. and why. Yeah. If it was Theodore, I'd say in a heartbeat. Oh, yeah. And uh, anybody I, I else, think part of it is maybe. who else who else is involved too. Like, because I, I wouldn't really, the only guy that shows up, or if it's just the three of us, that would just feel weird. But like, if you had mm-hmm. a if you had a solid like eight to ten dudes that were like back to do it, the yeah. only way I would do it is if some of the re- like really OG guys were coming yeah. back and doing it. So. Yes, yeah, so some bring us bring back some of like the Vitu Willow guys too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. They 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 were supposed to show up to the homecoming rally when I was leading it my junior year. And didn't and then I was trying to get them on this podcast and like three of them didn't respond. So uh, the the five tuba luba guys who do watch this, if y'all still want to make it happen, just like let us know because uh, the guys that watch they're they're good. Um, I have to give a shout out to Kelly Boggs. Uh, he came to my concert the other night uh, to support. Oh, nice. You're you're a crew man. Uh, so yeah, I, I I would say I would my answer to that question actually has been an immediate no since May tenth, two thousand ten. <laughs> Um, but I, I think like the last game I was at, I was like, you know, if they ever called us to do something like that, 
Yeah, like not enough people know who we are now. It wouldn't be weird. Like you don't have a stadium full of people that would be looking at us like, "Wow, has been." I will like, say, you were hit like the hardest out of all of us. They, yeah. they 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 rocked on you a lot more than the rest of us. True, but y'all <laughs> also had to deal with my fallout. So it's kind of like y'all had the leftovers of my damage to clean up. It, it yeah. When when you left, it was that I felt like they were so much tighter on us. We didn't have the leeway that that you did especially your junior year yeah yeah no all, all that to say i i feel like it's like those tv show casts that you know that you you read online it's like man they didn't like each other behind the scenes or whatever and then it's like they do a reunion show and it's like you know time passes you look at something it's like yeah something like that i would i would do it plus i think they kind of need it <laughs> i don't i don't want to do it but they kind of need it so. <laughs> yeah i don't know um students to care about sports that like i don't even care how they do it at this point they just, mm-hmm. you reach a point of no cons- uh, return with some like gen z can care about sports you see it and I, i'm not even talking a&m baylor those school like even texas state that's just a part you know they go there to party but they're still an act like the one game i went to at bobcat stadium there was a pretty legitimate fan base in that stadium of students now were there more of them drunk in the parking lot yes but were there <laughs> still a pretty decent amount there in the stadium also drunk and yelling yes there were there were Dude, quite a bit i got to say living down here though i that had to have been like a miracle of a game because everybody alumni and students when i knew students talks about how much nobody cares about mm-hmm. texas state sports well that that's what i mean Weird. like a very low percentage of people at that school care but there's still enough like 5% yeah, of their student body goes though, it's still yeah. a big so that's yeah. really not they're, – they're probably not a good example for me to use. But, you know, I've, I've even worked at places where small schools had a massive fan base. So I'm kind of like, it, you know, it's – I don't think they've reached the point of no return. I think they've reached the point of the people who don't care to fix it are a past no return. There's a mm. – when I, when I worked in higher education, I used to say there was a higher ed comfort bubble. So I'm an ideas guy. Y'all know that. I'm a schemer. Y'all know that. I like to come up with new plans, and you need that in the student life aspect. So I'd come up to somebody who hadn't had to do that, you know, in a few years. I'm like, let's start a new thing. And they're like, whoa, that's going to require doing a little more work. You know, it's like you could really ruffle feathers that way. Not that I, I'm, I'm not a fan. I don't even know what the administration would do to bring back a healthy sporting culture at UMHB. Nothing. Because uh, I've asked certain people who are there and they've said, well, the, the students, it would have to be student-led. You know, like yeah. when I first inquired yeah. about the couch group coming back, the answer I got was, it could come back, but it has to be the student's idea and students have to lead it and all that. It's like, but there's no nurturing. Like you still have to develop it. There has to be a guidance mm-hmm. or what I am, what I am still open to and just didn't do. Cause somebody else was going to do something like this was it, they need an alumni support base, whether it, like a booster club, not, not alumni telling them what to yell, but like mm-hmm. helping them out in the beginning of the year kind of giving them some guidance like hey this works this doesn't trust us you know that kind of a thing so i think i think that that's how it would need to happen but that said that's also why it won't happen i don't think Mm. yeah every time i talk to those students now um in over the last several years they just seem completely dumbfounded by the idea of doing like a an away game that yeah. like oh that, gosh it's, it's well, so much more than just what happens on campus it's just i don't know people i that they think about it differently i guess because for us it was like yeah if we can go to the game like that was our we're week. gonna go to the oh, game yeah, yeah. because and, they didn't monitor one, like, us just, as much it was more fun. <laughs> we would have caravans of people mm-hmm. to a lot of these games you know and it they was so fun yeah back. like southern naz was great it was just so fun taking over other people's stadiums and turning yeah. it into our home game i mean not the less... fact that we, i thought we were and gonna die on the way to that game the road, oh, yeah. like that was my favorite part it was never the game it was the trip itself oh you yeah know? that's where you do the game at the hotel yeah <laughs> they but they'll be like oh but abilene's a so far way away y'all really no. drove up here? it's I'm two like, hours hey, Take, okay, lines. we're about to have to log back in, but because I have like one or two more questions. But All right. I will say, when somebody complains to somebody that grew up in Amarillo, how long it takes to get places, please. What are you doing? That's that's my walk uphill both ways, except there were no hills. <laughs> All right, let me. Okay. What you got? All right. So earlier we talked about how it's just like the Fantastic Four Baptists are going to be the conference mm-hmm. soon. Um. 
I, this this could open up the gate for some hot takes. I don't know. I'm I just like hearing everyone's take is conference realignment hits D three, and then people look at me like, no, it doesn't. I'm like, dude, it it hits D three when it yeah. hits one con- when it hits one league, it hits them all. Where should UMHB go? Because I think some people know my thoughts. I want to hear y'all's. Yeah, yeah. Where where, where should we go? Where are we gonna go? What could we do? Conference division. <laughs> all three of those. <laughs> So our uh, our good friend uh, Logan Hansen uh, has an idea. Shout out! Shout yeah, out! Shout out him. Uh, I'm reading this right now. So it says idea for the Northwest Conference SCIAC ASC Super Conference. So basically, a lot of those teams have folded and left or moved as well, and so not everybody has a full conference. So he just says we're going to have all these teams together. Not everybody's going to be able to play each other, but he goes, it's a nine game conference schedule. Uh, each sub conference plays everybody. So, like, we would play all of the teams in the ASC, or the A- SCISC would play everybody, or Linfield would play all their teams, and then uh, we'd play a couple of games versus the other conference game teams, and, and like a kind of like you know what, whatever they're going to do with uh, the SEC if they do go to those pods, yeah. which I think if we don't move, that might be the only thing we can do. Yeah. Uh, I'm like, like I'm wondering is... if we're gonna get forced to move up. I... Logan, Logan is always man after my own heart with his Twitter threads. Uh, that's yeah. I love that idea. As as great as that sounds, I wouldn't want to do that because, uh, especially with Division Three, the traveling is extremely yeah. hard. I don't want to yeah. travel, especially to Linfield every few years. No, not no. not for fun. Um, but yeah, um, so the real idea is moving up. Because I mean, there's just no other place, no other conference in Division Three to go to. So you move up. Where do we move up to, though? I'll, I'll back See, you on that too. Like it sounds really right stupid there, yeah. to say this, but in this economy, you know, traveling ain't cheap. Like you won't, no. you won't catch up to the amount you're saving with scholarships, but you'll offset a little bit of that. Like if you happen to go to Linfield and all these places for your away games versus. You know, yeah. we're already giving, let's be honest, we're giving the Crusader financial aid to so many football players. Like, let's just make it official in IL that junk. Yeah. We'd be giving up the 30 minute drive to Southwestern for a, dra- a flight to Linfield. Like, that's just not yeah. feasible. Yeah, for real. In, in, like, Miller's Barbecue, where are y'all at? Y'all, y'all need to be yeah. some of these guys. NIL, baby. <laughs> sign some guys. <laughs> Dude, if Miller started giving NIL deals, I'll re enroll and just say, I want to walk <laughs> on. Like, I'll just go. Yeah, man. We, we need Miller's Barbecue NIL. I was listening earlier to the D3 podcast and they were kind of talking about this and saying, what we, what could we do? And they were saying, you know, if we wanted to stay in the conference and have the conference, you know, get more, more football teams, it's like, well, who would, who, who would add football? It's like, well, I don't know what it costs to start football. I don't know if that has anything to do with your endowment, if that, if that can go, but I mean, there's not much really that can be done. I mean, if UTD wanted to start a football program, they yes. could, I think. And then like, you're not going to get, uh, I mean, who are those other small, small like uh, Concordia is not going to do it. Shriner's yeah. starting football, but they're in yeah. the SCAC. Yeah. Uh, yeah. See, I I thought of a an alternate because the, the be one thing people re- bring up is like, well, Garrett, yeah, football might be able to hold its own in like the you know the Southland or the Lone Star mm-hmm. Conference, but the other sports can't. I'm like, okay, first of all, some of them can. Second of all what if we pulled a Notre Dame or Gonzaga type thing where you switch with somebody? Like what I mean is HBU or I'm sorry, HCU. Now they <laughs> historically have done really well in basketball. Cause for the longest time, that was all they had baseball. They got Lance Berkman's coaching. I'm like, they're on the up, you know, they're wow. they, and they almost beat a and M last year. Like H HCU has got some baseball. So you've got all these powerful sports there and they have a real, like when I was there, I think they had a pretty good beach volleyball team. Like they got all that stuff. All they would need to do is just for football switch umhb and hcu in football only and i i the thing that makes me there are two points that make me nervous on that i'm not because obviously umhb is not going to move up and dominate like domination will be over if we move up but all the whiners like well we don't go because the games aren't close enough i'm like well now you got you put your money (laughs) where your mouth is because you got it now because i know southeastern louisiana was in uh that they're moving up um who was it uh a&m uh king no i'm I'm drawing a blank the one in east texas a&m commerce um <laughs> uh where my granddad went shout out they so they were dominant in d2 and they went up to that conference with hcu and all that and they were not that great they did not do as well as i thought they were going to so 
I and then they won a he, championship. Yeah. Well, that they 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 they, they jumped after that. So they won D, right? they they won D two and then moved up to okay. FBS. But I still think UMHB on on good years we could be the middle of that league. I mean, it's like they were they were either really good or really bad. It was just there was like this gap in that conference. Mm. So and SFA is probably going to leave, and we don't have Sam Houston in there anymore. So UMHB could go play. The other one is the Lone Star Conference because, dang it, if Sol Ross thinks they can do it, I mean, West Texas A&M is going to kill them. It's going to be awful. Uh, it, it seems strange that they are moving, but I, I why not, I guess. Yeah. You know, and yeah. I think that could help out with a fan, thing, fan culture yeah. as well. People might say, you know what, I actually care more now. I don't know. That's where the school absolutely needs to nurture it, though, because yeah. you can't just say we're going to move up a league because if we're not going to be good at first, plus you have the play, the no playoff rule when you first change divisions, mm-hmm. which I, I thought that was only if you dropped down. To me, it makes no sense at no, all. No, it doesn't. At yeah, all. No. Which is NCAA. I, I, think Saint, I think St. Thomas could have made the playoffs this year, they but they weren't, they weren't eligible. Sam and Houston. St. Thomas is who makes me really think we should go to FCS because they, yeah. they've already – we were a better program than they are than they were. Uh, I think they also had the help because they have like ten thousand students or whatever. They have they were really big. Uh, no, I get it. They they're a bigger school than we are, but we I mean we were just a, we were a tier above them as far as program. The other thing true. is the people so, say, well, we can't recruit, you know, because we're recruiting with scholarship. How are we going to recruit? I'm like, have you seen our already. facilities? Like, I mean, look at it, our recruiting is already happening. Yeah, yeah. Our our stadium compared to half the ones in the Lone Star or Southland. We got yeah. that. <laughs> We're good. Can't, a Mayborn, great basketball arena. I mean, it. I don't. I, I guess I don't know. Maybe I'm just unrealistic, but I I don't understand the hesitation and the let's just keep dominating D three. I'm like, well, we could, but those are. I mean, when you don't have the fan atmosphere and you're up by sixty, it's a bad combo for a Saturday. You talk about ir- being irritated. Here's what irritates me. It's been at least a year and a half since these teams have started to notify that they're leaving. Mm-hmm. How much has the ASC spoken about it? No, they haven't going said full. a word. They're they haven't said a word. They don't care. Both Do you ever think 12. maybe like because UMHB put so much money into sports that we don't swing our weight around and maybe we're kind of like us and HSU are like an obnoxious OU Texas combo in the Big Twelve and everyone's just leaving us? Is that possible? Is that going on behind the scenes? It wouldn't I mean, surprise me. It could, but I, I have no idea how that kind of politics works down here, so I wouldn't know. Uh, maybe, but I mean, it it can't just be because football is so much better because everybody else has other sports that they do well in. We joke. We joke about That's why Harden kind of Simmons. That up. We joke <laughs> about Harden Simmons. We say their football team sucks, you know. All the, but when you think about it from like a ETBU, a TLU, a McMurray standpoint, there's really there's two teams that they have to lose to every year you know most of the time like sometimes hsu has a dip but like really it's like it's kind of like tyler's ou texas thing it's like those are almost two guaranteed l's so you're almost guaranteed no playoffs or no conference like they've probably reached a what's the point frame of mind i don't know so i don't know everyone just leaves and we stay it's like we are i am the senate (laughs) (laughs) No, I, I it, I'm sadly not surprised we haven't heard much talk out of UMHB on it, but surely there's been conversations. I believe they're they well, got it. It feels like they have because they keep upgrading all the sports. They get they, you know they're upgrading the golf stuff. Like they're just yeah. doing all this stuff. It's, there's no way that's just coincidence. I wonder if I, it's I meeting the checklist. About They've added would, sports. Yeah. We, we've got this number of sports needed to move up. It's like yeah. this that wasn't just happening. I, I guarantee you they at least like commissioned a study on it or something like that yeah. to like research what it would be like. And, and it, if we haven't, then they're not as smart as I thought they were. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> I, I don't like, I trust O'Rear on a lot, on, on a lot of those things, business, cause he's a business savvy dude, but I just, there, there are some times where I'm just like, we would let that opportunity pass. I mean, I don't know. Unless, I, unless they've been talking to like Sagu and like some of those Oklahoma NAIA schools about jumping up here. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, Ooh, I just no, no Sagu, please. I, I I just hope that like I I, I hope that now Pentecostals coming in. <laughs> We're gonna pass snakes over the couch group <laughs> section. <laughs> no, I 
I hope like West Texas A&M has a new coach. I hope they rebuild. I hope they're great. You know, I, I don't really follow them. I never, I'm a bad Canyonite. I was never <laughs> able to go to a game when I wanted to. It was just, I've never been to a WT football game, but if they're not that good and UMHB moved up and we are very good, I am going back to Canyon. <laughs> I will sit on the visitor side of Kimbrough state. Oh, well, no, they don't play Kimbrough anymore. Their new stadium, which looks a lot like ours and just be like, I'm back, but I'm not rooting for you. <laughs> See, I, I would love to have a good rivalry with Abilene Christian. Because you know what? It was, I would miss hating Abilene, and then that would, you know, make it uh, where I could hate them again, and it'd be great. I don't think we want that smoke. <laughs> well, they've got they, they're well, FCS, FCS too. Listen, now, HSU they? kicked your butts at first, you know? It gives us something to uh, to aim for. Isn't ACU going FBS like Sunbelt? Because mm-hmm. I know I Conference so. USA and Sunbelt, they I'm absorbed sure. a lot of teams because Conference USA almost folded. So they took Sam Houston State, like Abilene Christian, and a couple others. So it's which FBS needs to just like say, okay, let's cut the power off at the top and restructure this. There's two or have a relegation conference. You know, it's something to where it's not as convoluted as it is. Now. I think there's going to be a breakaway. I, I think yeah. it's going to be basically a super SEC and a super big 10 and that's about it yeah ashton reynolds texted me the other day he's like how are these pac-12 fans gonna react when they hear who is umhb and why are they joining us <laughs> nice. let's do it yeah. we're 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 left coast liberals we got like belton to go <laughs> ski around on <laughs> let's do this oh man uh yeah that is was it, my is, big is question it possible that us and harden simmons are like like legitimately like UT and OU and they wouldn't go away without each other? Is that is that possible? I think the I could see it. is not nearly as even considering yeah. HSU keeps having a hard time turning its lights on. Well, true. Uh, but, yeah. <laughs> Which I, might I, be I, why I, they want to go with us. And I could see <laughs> I could see there being some talk, not from a sports standpoint, but the Southern Baptist Convention, you know, like let's help a let's help a brother out, you know, kind of thing mm. from people who are not like, screw them, like we are like I could see yeah. there being some administrative thing like, hey, let's take them with us. Yeah, I do so, think all the Baptists are sticking together for yeah. sure. <laughs> it appears that way, at least. I don't know if all four will, but each well, of as long each as you got D- hockey. As long as you stay in D3, I think. Oh, yeah. If, if we're in D3, I could I could see them. Yeah. No, I don't see HSU coming up at all. There's no way. They, they, there's no way they could pull that off. Maybe they'll look at it and say, hey, let's go D2. Because we won't finish last behind Soros. <laughs> We're guaranteed to not be last. <laughs> They're leaving to get away from us, and then we follow them and like, come on! Yeah, pull, a Mc- pull a McMurray. I'm going back. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I would love to go up with HSU. That is the number. If you ask me what I would miss, I would miss HSU. I know it's just so good to kick their butts every year and break their hearts. I've always said, bring them with us because if, if my plan backfires and we're, we can't compete at that level, I'm like, Oh, we've made a mistake. Instead of battling for first, we can battle for last. And it still means yeah. something when we play them and it'll be just as hyped as it ever was. Okay. All right. For horrible reasons, but I'll take it. Absolutely. Yeah. I, I don't know. I, I'm I'm bad for saying this, but like like y'all are very good at being able to keep up with not just the conference, but y'all know what's going on landscape wise. Like D three, I I can tell you absolutely what's going on with UMHB week by week. But I just like I I get well for the reasons mentioned earlier. I get I I can't just go to watch. I'll watch it on my computer screen. I'll have A and M on the screen. I'll have UMHB on the screen. I'll watch, but it's hard for me to go to that environment first of all. But second of all, it's just it's so hard for me to follow D3 personally. Like it's, I'm not bumping it. I'm just saying I personally have such a hard time keeping up with it. And when, one time I, I was like, I like sorry, go. I was just saying, like, like I was saying earlier, I'm from Canyon and I couldn't tell you what's going on with WT. Like it's, it's just, it's really hard to focus. On. I guess I just, I like the personalities in D3. Uh, yeah. You know, it's just, it's a fun Twitter space. Uh, <laughs> the, the it's TV. very small, but it's very yeah. passionate. Yeah, and everybody knows one another. You know, I've got people I feel like I'm almost friends with from like Wisconsin and stuff. I've never even met. It's fun. I, uh, I like it. Was it the third division that tweets our podcast? Third division, yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, we do uh, like some of you guys. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We, we, I feel like me and third division have a love hate relationship for one another. Uh, <laughs> okay, every once in a while, man, he'll say something about UHB. I'm like, ah, oh, man, you disrespect him. Uh, <laughs> no, he's funny. Um, 
yeah, it's just fine. And I don't know. It's it's uh, it was dominated by just two teams for so long. Um, it's not it's fun now because it, there's so much parity, uh, and it's exciting seeing new teams kind of get in on the action for the first time in forever. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Well, that's all the questions I could remember. I was going to ask. I really wanted to touch on that conference a lot. Ever since Ashton texted me about the Pac-12 the other night, I was like, I need to ask Andy about this when he's on the podcast. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. yeah. We about turned into a D three sports podcast. Are we? Are we? Are We're coming we after you, Pat and Keith and Greg. <laughs> yeah, let's do it, dude. Get you and Brett to we'll just watch a, a D three each week and talk about it. Oh my lord, that would be. Mm, wow. We, we need our survive. own a podcast slash broadcasting team that just like un- <laughs> unauthorized broadcasts from the field. Do live stream watch alongs? Yeah, dude, that's a thing. I mean, like, I don't think have, they have the warnings in front of those games, do they? We have a sideline reporter. And then have yeah. somebody stand right in front of the train horn when it goes off. No, don't do that. No, I, I know. I learned the hard way. That, uh, that is why I'm half deaf. <laughs> we just need, we would need uh, like a chirp mic, like Shorzy on Letter Kitty when they mic him up. Just have like somebody. Okay. Just, just thinking about this during the football games when they had Skeeta on the sideline. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I loved it. He was great. He, he needs to be on the podcast. He, he, he was enraging D3 Twitter. They were like, who is this guy cheering for the, like, the team? Like, he's not a partial <laughs> broadcaster. And, and it's like every play, he's like, he has the first down or something. It's like, mm-hmm. oh, my God. Oh, it was I great. Lo- I-, I love when the announcers are homers. I, I was listening to a, I forgot who we were playing. It was a basketball game not long ago. And um, I think it was after we had played Kentucky, a- A&M had played Kentucky and the refs just ho- like A&M should have beaten Kentucky. And I, I, it was not UMHB UTD level screwing with the, you know, the referee thing, but it, it was very suspicious. And uh, mm-hmm. like the next week there was another one. And so one of A&M's basketball announcers like, no, I'm I'm going to tell you how the refs are doing. I'll deal with the fine on Monday again. <laughs> just, I'm just gonna, I'm, we're the announcers. We're going to tell you what's going on, and they're screwing us over. It's like, cool. Nice. Yeah. Cool. Well, gentlemen. It's been real. As always. Yes, sir. It's been, it's been real. It ain't been real fun. Oh. Or something. <laughs> uh, it well, is. You can't, you can't say the go home. You can't stay here because we're already at home. <laughs> We'll say that for the Seth episode. <laughs> All right. See y'all. For now, it is 940 in HSU. Still, Still sucks. But we'll see you in the Pac-12. <laughs> Catch Peace. you guys later. <laughs>